everybody. Let's talk about using the mixer brush in Photoshop to make a little portrait out of a photograph. There's a pretty quick and easy, I wouldn't say easy, but a fun method for uh, using your mixer brush in Photoshop uh, to build up your portrait. So what we have here is a picture to start with. And using the mixer brush is a nice way to basically add painting effects to uh, a picture. And um, it's not gonna require us to draw and to do uh, a lot of custom uh, sketching and all that ahead of time. We can actually make our own artistic application to this picture. So I would avoid uh, using any kind of an artistic filter in Photoshop. Those always look fake. And so this method allows you to give kind of a painterly look to your picture as you go along. So what we're gonna do is starting off with our picture, we're gonna make a duplicate. So we're gonna take the picture, drag it down to the new layer icon and create a copy. And then we're gonna change over and switch to the mixer brush. And what the mixer brush does is it basically smears and smudges your brush strokes, very similar to the way that um, the smudge brush would work or some of the wet media works in Photoshop. What's nice about the mixer brush is you can apply a, uh, a paintbrush to it. So if you look at your uh, paintbrush options, after you select the mixer brush, select the little down slider, and you can pick and slide and look for one of the, the options. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom, the wet media brushes. I'm gonna go for uh, one of these oil brushes. I'm going to try Kyle's Real Oils Flex Wet. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that up here at the top, the setting that I want to check is I want to select the little cross through the brush. That's going to be clean the brush after each stroke. That's important because as you work with the mixer brush, what it's going to do or what it would do is pick up color and it's almost like loading your brush. And over a while, over a while it gets a little overloaded. And so it can cause some issues. Um, one other shortcut to show you guys before we start is if you ever press the R key on your keyboard, you can actually rotate your picture. And that's really helpful, especially if you're working on a Wacom tablet or something like that. Instead of trying to tilt your screen, sometimes it's necessary to turn it so that your brush stroke flows in the direction you want to go. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom in here a little bit and focus in on a particular spot so we can kind of make that, that brush work. Um, also, pay attention to your keyboard shortcuts for making your brushes larger or smaller. Those are under the plus and minus button. They're the two bracket keys. So the right bracket will make your brush larger. The left bracket will make your brush smaller. All right, so let's try and see what happens here. As I pull with the brush, you're gonna see that what it starts to do is uh, make a blur. And it's gonna blur on my picture and kind of blend. You see it's gonna pick up the color that's actually on the photo. And you can see as I go onto her nose here, how the picture starts to smear, the brush starts to smear the color that's sitting there. And in the beginning, it's good to kind of go slow, not take really big strokes, and not actually make a really large brush, but try to kind of follow the contour of the color or the landmark on the photo so you don't completely blow it out. I mean, you could just go right across an important feature and oh, screw it up. What you wanna do is be kind of delicate. Imagine you're painting a real picture and you're trying to use little strokes to indicate shadows or details. And I find the best method is just kind of tug back and forth with the brush, starting out in color areas and shadow areas and trying to enhance what's there. And over time, you'll slowly build up kind of a smudged look that looks very painterly. So let's focus in on a detail like the eye. That's where we're really going to see how this starts to look more like a painting. So here I'm going to make my brush smaller. So I'm going to use the left bracket and kind of smear and make it smaller. I don't want it too big. If it's too big again, 
it'll really smear the detail too much. I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit as I tug uh, on the photo itself and just let the brush stroke start to take on the properties that are present in the photo. And by using this method, what we're doing, okay, is allowing the color, the landmarks, the detail that's already in the picture uh, to build up the, the image. You know, there isn't really any filter that is going to do an artistic effect like this. No matter what filter you try to use to get away with, to basically make a photo into a painting, it's always gonna look fake, It's never gonna look real. Um, I like to say that there is a shortcut though for making artwork in, in Illustrator or Photoshop and making something look awesome or interesting or artistic. The shortcut is Command U. All right, corny dad joke over. All right, so I'm just gonna paint around here, play around with the color, play around with the brush, try to build up that back and forth painterly pattern. All right, now let's get into the eye itself. This is a little tricky. So I'm gonna have to go with a small brush. If I do it too much, it's gonna mess up, mess up the eye. And she has these nice eyelashes. I don't wanna smear those too much either. At the same time, I need to go in and out here on these strokes so that it doesn't look like a photo anymore, but it actually looks painted. So I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit. Smearing, tugging, making sure that it has a little bit of that deliberate paint stroke. Basically trying to conceal, conceal the, the photo underneath. I don't want to make it too obvious that it was a photograph. I want to kind of hide that. And I think the secret is just oh, a little too much. Secret is going back and forth. Doing a little bit here, a little bit there. Shorter, smaller brush strokes that go along. Kind of going left to right, back and forth. So try to build up those areas of color. Now some might say, hey, wait a minute, you're you're cheating. You're you're basically painting into a photo. Yeah. I am. I don't think I'd ever say that this is uh, an original painting for sure, but it is a digital painting, right? Still requires finesse, still requires some work. Make a mistake, hit Command Z. And no two blended, blurred, mixed paintings are gonna look the same. So they'll always be different. And it's gonna be based on your hand motion the way you tugged and pulled the brush, everything's gonna be different. So don't feel bad doing this. In fact, this is a good way to learn to practice the paint because you can start to get used to um, color, how it's mixed, highlights and shadows, how those things kind of turn into detail marks. Personally, I'm really attracted to um, bold brush strokes. I like seeing brush strokes in a painting. So this naturally is going to have kind of an oil painted appearance when it's finished. You may not like that effect. So this may not be the, the method for you. But you can kind of see how it's starting to come together.
So to see a little bit of, you know, before and after, that's after, that's painted, that's before. So you can kind of see how it's starting to blur, starting to come together as a painting. Maybe just to finish off, I'm not gonna have time to do the whole picture, but to kind of get into making it really obvious will be to do a few strokes into the hair, start smearing. It's very important when you do the hair that you follow the contour in the direction that the hair is flowing. You definitely don't want uh, to cross. You don't want to go the opposite direction. That's not going to look right. So you want to flow with the hair, let it kind of smear. Now, there's no reason why you couldn't, you know, take this as a starting point and then go in with traditional uh, digital paintbrush and start adding other detail to your photo as you go. Uh, there's no reason you can't do that. So you can kind of see how that paint and the hair is starting to make it look a little more like a painting. Here's something very interesting, which is a little bit like magic to me. Over on the sidebar, you've got an art history brush. I'm sorry, a history brush tool. Okay, if you take that history brush and run that over your picture, it will start to restore where you painted with the um, with the mixer brush. So you can actually go back and forth. With that history brush, you can actually restore where you've painted. So if you did a mistake and you don't like the way it looks, take that that history brush and go back a step. It's really awesome. So pretty much for this technique, you just go back and forth between the mixer and the history, and you start blending and building up your painting. You can do a couple bold strokes in the background. Just kind of Try to distort that because I feel like that should be a little more abstract than the original painting. So you can kind of see where we're going. All right, so that's a technique you can use for setting up a portrait using the mixer brush to make it look like a, an oil painting in Photoshop. All right, hopefully that gives you some ideas. See you next time, you guys.